everyone. For this week's video, I'm going to be giving you all an updated care guide on Camponatus castaneus. Now, since my last Camponatus care guide video, I have learned a lot more about the species in general. But a disclaimer here, most of the information is going to be the same. Like for instance, if you have another Camponatus species that is similar to this, or just Camponatus that live in the same area, the hibernation details as well as the nuptial flight schedules will be the same. But if you live somewhere like Florida, then you will not have to worry about hibernation. And their nuptial flights are usually year round. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So first off, let me just talk to you guys about what uh, captive nests you should be housing Camponatus in. Now this goes for this species, Castaneus, but it also goes for generally most Camponata species. There are a few exceptions. So I have noticed, and it's kind of really a known thing, that Camponatus nest in wood. Now they don't actually eat the wood, but they have to um, have the wood be sort of rotten so that they can actually nest into it and burrow the holes, but not super rotten. Now anyways, a captive nest that I have noticed to uh, be really good for Camponatus are from Tar Heel Ants. Now I'm not exactly sure why, but I'm pretty sure it is because it mostly resembles how they would nest in the wild, so uh, just keep that in mind. With this species, they really thrived um, in a Tar Heel Ant mini hearth, so I would recommend uh, starting an actual queen in test tube, and then after she gets around like 10 workers, then move her into a Tar Heel Ant's mini hearth, and then you can move her into a Tar Heel Ant's fortress once the colony gets to around 60 workers. Now I moved my colony a little bit prematurely, but in this footage here, the reason why they're all just super like condensed in one chamber is because the footage in the background is me just taking them out of hibernation. Some common names for Camponatus would be carpenter ants, which I just mentioned why, and also the sugar ant. Now the reason why they're called sugar ants is because they really enjoy their sweets. And I've noticed that always keeping a bit of honey in the outworld is really good for the species because they constantly drink from it. Another uh, good point about feeding is that you want to switch up the uh, proteins that you give them. They don't really care about which sugar you give them. For instance, you could just keep feeding them the same honey forever, but it's good to experiment with some apple slices. But just make sure that they are not for pesticides, like they don't have pesticides in them, because that could kill the colony. But back to the proteins, you want to make sure that you feed them a good variety of proteins. If you absolutely have to uh, feed the colony proteins from the outside, uh, like your garden, like grasshoppers or something, just make sure you boil them first so that they don't also have pesticides. But what I do and what I would recommend is to keep the um, colony on a well-fed diet of mealworms and cockroaches from the pet store. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the hibernation details are usually the same with most Camponata species. But of course, if you live in a warmer climate where there is no snow and therefore the uh, colonies do not hibernate, then you can just completely skip this step. But if you do live in a cold region, like for instance where it snows, then you want to hibernate your colonies from around October to March. Now same goes for nuptial flight schedules. If you live in a region where it is tropical and therefore the ants do not hibernate, then the colonies can usually have their nuptial flights year round. But if you live somewhere again where it is not tropical, then you can expect all Camponata species, or at least most of them, to have their nuptial flights from around March to, I'd say, July. Now, I'm not sure if the species have their nuptial flights right when they come out of hibernation and they have their uh, elates in hibernation with them, or if they just, uh, the first workers that they produce are late so that they can have their nuptial flights early in the season. If you guys know, then tell me in the comment section below. Some tips about Camponatus castanese in general that I have really just learned from keeping them 
are that they are not very sensitive to light. Now, um, I'm pretty sure this is how it is with most Campanata species, but I just wanted to put that out there. Also, they can climb plastics, so have some like uh, baby powder solution or uh, like Fluon, just to make sure they do not s escape the outworld you are housing them in. Now, as I said earlier, I also have noticed that this species really likes sugar. So I would recommend keeping some honey around their enclosure at all times. Now that's about it for this week's video. If there's anything you think I missed, then tell me in the comment section below and I will reply to your comment. Also, if you're sticking around for explanation as to why I did not upload last week, I basically just had a lot of schoolwork to catch up on and I was having a bit of issues with my software again. But don't worry, um, everything is fine. Thank you all for watching and I will see all of you in next week's video. Peace.